So today I want to do a video entirely on frame pacing, or rather, bad frame pacing. Now what is that? When you have a refresh rate on your screen, say it's 60 hertz or 120 hertz, or just a basic target frame rate that you're trying to achieve, but your game is not reaching it. Like I've got a 120 hertz screen right now. I'm not hitting 120 FPS. I'm hitting like 80, 90, 100, depending on where I'm at. The point is, your frame rate is not matching your refresh rate. Greater technologies like VRR or G-Sync or FreeSync can make the monitor's refresh rate actually match the frame rate, which is good. It eliminates tearing while still supporting variable uh, frame rates. And that, for the most part, eliminates frame pacing issues. But the majority of people aren't on that kind of monitor. So this video is mostly dedicated to people who aren't on variable refresh screens, where their screen like mine right now is locked to 120. Regardless of the frames of the game, the monitor is refreshing at 120. So what that means is when I have uneven frames like this, some frames spend a shorter amount of time than other frames on the screen due to being desynced from the frame rate. So that creates a frame pacing issue and the perception of judder or FPS issues. Like even if you have a high frame rate like this, if you're in a raid and it's like jumping all over the place, like it's like 59, 70, 60, 89, it's all over the place. The actual pacing of the frames could feel bad. You can actually feel like you're lagging when you're not because your input latency is changing constantly. The frames are not matching the screen and it's just all out of sync. That's when you consider maybe you should actually should cap your FPS. And to do that, you're going to probably want to go on either your NVIDIA control panel or your AMD control panel on Windows or on Mac OS. You go into graphics here and cap your frame rate here to an interval that divides evenly into your refresh rate. So with my monitor, because it's a 120 hertz screen, if I can't hit 120 FPS, then I want to target 60. Because now, instead of jumping between like 60 and 90, now I'm just constantly 60. So now my frames are synchronized so that every single frame spends exactly two frames on my 120 refresh rate. So the, the pacing of the frames is even, and it creates a smoother experience. Even though I made my frame rate lower than it was a second ago, the perception of smoothness is improved because I improved frame pacing. That's something that you should consider when you're having performance issues that aren't necessarily frame rate, but whether the game feels like it's hitching or it's just, it doesn't feel smooth, even though you have a high frame rate. If having, having high FPS is not always the right call, it's not stable FPS. Sometimes stable outweighs the benefit of high. And let's say you, you can't hit 60 FPS. Well, then maybe, you could see things on the else. Now, if you're 120 hertz refresh screen, you can actually go to 40 FPS and still have a uh, evenly divides into 120. Now, if it's only a 60 hertz screen, your options are more limited. It's either 60, 30, or 15. Obviously, you don't want 15 or 30 because you feel like you're playing a Nintendo Switch. 40 is really the lowest you can go where it actually doesn't feel too terrible. And on a 120 hertz screen, you can go there. Let's say your screen is like 144 hertz. Now, 60 is not evenly divisible. Now you want to go to 72 FPS instead of 60. And it's just, you just do the math and make sure that uh, whatever you divide it by, divide it by two, divide it by three, to improve your frame pacing, you want to go in there evenly. Now I'll take a minute and say that even when I do have variable refresh rate on, there are caveats with that too that can make the game not feel as good. For example, most variable refresh screens if your frame rate is unstable, it causes it to flicker because it's having to change the, the rate at which the lights or LEDs or OLEDs have to flicker to provide light because it has to flicker at a rate that's equal to the refresh rate. And it just, it'll still create an experience that's not ideal. So oftentimes, even G Sync and Free Sync, while they eliminate tearing, you shouldn't necessarily rely on them to create a smooth experience if your FPS is all over the place. So in that case, you still might have a benefit 
of improving your frame pacing to where your frame rate is consistent across the board to reduce flicker, to reduce judder, and to reduce the overall perception to the human eye of unstable frame rates. Because yes, even with free sync and G sync, an unst unstable frame rate is perceivable because you can tell when the game is speeding up and slowing down. And for me, personally, this monitor, I, say, I, I called it 120 hertz display, but I, it, I lied. It actually has a variable refresh rate display. We have variable refresh rate disabled because I think it's better to actually lock a stable FPS like I have here. Or if I can hit 120 FPS, I'll lock it at 120. Like when I'm playing classic ball, it's always locked at 120. But when I'm playing retail, I actually usually lock it at 60 because I prefer better frame pacing over higher frames. I can hit 120 in many areas, but I will not hit 120 in a raid. Forget it. I'm too CPU bound there. So I lock it at 60 because frame pacing is king over high frame rates. And I want to throw an extra bonus at the end of this video when it comes to streamers and content creators that they don't often realize. You can actually create frame pacing issues for your viewers if you're, again, desynchronizing your frame rate to the viewer's frame rate. If you're watching a stream on Twitch, you're getting 30 FPS or you're getting 60 FPS. You're not getting 144 FPS. You're not getting 120 FPS. So if you're playing a game, let's say you have 144 hertz screen and you're playing Call of Duty or something, and you're, and you're streaming at 144 FPS because you're locked in at 144 on your screen, where your viewers are going to see constant frame pacing issues. They're actually going to see judder to where the, or the video actually, it actually looks like you have frame lag when you don't because of the, the, the synchronization. That's why I always tell streamers, if you have to watch the high frame rate, don't use 144. Purposely set your monitor to 120 because that way you at least have fr uh, frame pacing because, uh, or frame pacing with your viewers because 120 will divide evenly into 60. So when you downsample your 120 hertz screen to a 60 uh, hertz output to your stream, it will capture good. But if you're changing 144 to 60 to your stream or your YouTube videos, you're actually making the quality of your videos or your stream worse because you're introducing frame pacing issues. You want to make sure you're doing math and not using odd numbers. And if you're not hitting like one, like I said, all the rules I said applied with frame rate, like if you're not having a stable frame rate, but uh, and for you're using free sync or G sync, it's like doesn't matter to you. Again, your viewers don't have that. So consider about your viewer experience. But the TLDR is some of you who are having performance issues in game, but don't have FPS issues. Improving your frame pacing could do a lot to make your game experience better. It can, it can eliminate flickering of your backlights. It can make your screen feel like a percep perception of your gameplay much smoother because it is smoother. It's consistent. I'm just locked at 60 FPS constantly right now. It's smoother. Even this YouTube video, the second half I present better than the first half because the second half I had it locked at 60, which is the frame rate the video is going to be. But the first half, you might see it actually look like the game look was running worse, despite the fact the frame rate was higher, because the perception was damaged by incorrect frame pacing. Anyway, this is a short video, and it's not about improving your FPS. It's about providing the experience to yourself or to your viewers, if that applies. And I hope this video was helpful. And please like and subscribe for more technical analysis videos or just tips. I'm proving your gameplay, and I'll see you in the next video.